Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. Let me see if those lights got any love in it. Yeah, it does. Labor Day. Labor Day, the first Monday of September, is a creation of the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It constitutes a yearly national tribute to the contributions workers have made to the strength, prosperity, and well-being of our country. Through the years, the nation gave increasing emphasis to Labor Day. The first governmental recognition came through the municipal ordinance passed during 1885 and 1886. From these, a movement developed to secure state legislation. The first state bill was introduced into the New York legislation, but the first to become law was passed by Oregon on February 24, 1887. During the year, four more states, Colorado, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York, created the Labor Day holiday by legislative and enactment. By the end of the decade, Connecticut, Nebraska, and Pennsylvania had followed suit. By 1894, 23 other states had adopted the holiday in honor of workers. And on June 28th of that year, Congress passed an act making the first Monday in September of each year a legal holiday in the District of Columbia and the Territory. More than a hundred years after the first Labor Day observation, there is still some doubt as to who first proposed the holiday for workers. Some records show that Peter J. McGuire, General Secretary of the Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners, and the co-founder of the American Federation of Labor, was first in suggesting a day to honor those who from rude nature had developed and craved, carved all the grandeur we behold. But Peter McGuire's place in Labor Day history has not gone unchallenged. Many believe that Matthew McGuire, a machinist, not Peter McGuire, founded the holiday. Recent research seems to support the content that Matthew McGuire, later the secretary of Local 344 of the International Association of Machinists in, in Patterson, New Jersey, proposed the holiday in 1882 while serving as Secretary of the Central Labor Union in New York. What is clear is that the Central Labor Union adopted a Labor Day proposal and appointed a committee to plan a demonstration and picnic. First Labor Day. The first Labor Day holiday was celebrated on Tuesday, September 5th, in 1882 in New York City, in accordance with the plans of the Central Labor Union. The Central Labor Union held its second Labor Day holiday just a year later, on September 5th, 1883. In 1884, the first Monday in September was selected as the holiday as originally proposed and the Central Labor Union urged similar organizations in other cities to follow the example of New York and celebrate a working man's holiday on that date. The idea spread with the growth of labor organizations and in 1885, Labor Day was celebrated in many industrial centers of the country. The form, <coughs> the form that the observation and celebration of Labor Day should take was outlined in the first proposal of the holiday, a street parade to exhibit to the public the strength and spirit decor of the trade and labor organizations of the community, followed by a festival for the recreation and amusement of the workers and their families. 
This became the pattern for the celebration of Labor Day. Speeches by prominent men and women were introduced later. As more emphasis was placed on the economic and civic sing significance of the holiday. Still later, by resolution of the American Federation of Labor Convention of 1909, the Sunday preceding Labor Day was adopted as Labor Sunday and dedicated to the spiritual and educational aspects of the labor movement. The character of Labor Day celebration has undergone a change in recent years, especially in the large industrial centers where mass displays and huge parades have proven a problem. This change, however, is more a shift in emphasis and, and the medium of expression. Boy, both my lights are, batteries are going down on them. Is that coming? Uh, Labor Day address, addresses by labor union officials, industrials, educators, clergy, and government officials were given wide coverage in newspaper, radio, and television. The vital force of Labor Day added material to the highest standard of living and the greatest production the world has ever known and has brought us closer to the realization of our traditional ideas of economic and political democracy. It is appropriate, therefore, that the nation pay tribute on Labor Day to the creator of so much of the nation's strength, freedom, and leadership, the American worker. So there you go. That's the uh, history of Labor Day and what it is supposed to mean. And in this political world that we live in, it's a crying shame that we don't have more politicians fighting for us, the working class. It's a shame. It's a shame they ain't fight to keep the work here. I salute all of you workers out there. Everybody that's celebrating the holidays that has actually worked for it. Thank you very much. Those of you that are on the welfare line because you're lazy, don't celebrate. I know, you'll be drinking beer and barbecue. I shouldn't have went there, but I can't help it. To the working people of America, man, woman, black, white, orange, yellow, whatever, I thank you. We are the backbone of America. We are carrying the rest of the nation. All of the unwilling to work, whether they be a politician or somebody laid up in the city wanting to collect that government check, we are the ones providing it. And I thank you all for it. Go out and enjoy your day. I'm going to work my weekend. But y'all go out and enjoy yours. And know that you have done a lot to our country. You and our forefathers are what has built our country. Thank you very much. God bless you. Know that God loves you and so do I. Please be safe. Everybody wants you to go back to work Monday. Y'all have a good weekend now. Bye.